you've probably heard that old saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Uh, is that true? Or is it just an old wives' tale? Now, right away, let me say off the uh, right, right off the bat, let me tell you that old wives do not have tails. That that alone is not true. But moving on to apples, does an apple eating an apple a day keep the doctor away? The truth is, there is actually some science behind that old saying. An apple, uh, like many other fruits, is consists mainly of water. It's over ninety percent water. Uh, it does have some nutrients. Uh, a, medium, a, medium, a medium apple, for example, contains 95 calories, 25 grams of carbohydrate, 4.5 grams of fiber, which is a good, good amount of fiber, mostly in the peel of the apple. It contains 9% of the uh, daily requirement of vitamin C, 5% of the daily requirement of copper, 4% of the daily requirement of potassium, 3% of the daily requirement of uh, vitamin K, not a real powerhouse when it comes to uh, nutrients, but it does contain some. But th those, the vitamin content, those things act more, a lot of them act more as antioxidants rather than uh, anything else in, in the apple. In other words, the apple contributes antioxidants, uh, which uh, affects health in many ways. Here's some of the ways that apples might uh, help you help your health. For example, your heart. Studies show that eating more apples could be associated with a lower risk of several chronic conditions, including heart disease, although, and it's likely, the reason why it, uh, it, it helps to uh, reduce heart disease has to do with the conversion of what they call polyphenol, polyphenol, God, what's wrong with me today? Polyphenol, I haven't had my coffee, poly, polyphenol compounds in coffee, which are converted to active compounds by the intestinal microbiome which is the population of bacteria and other organisms that reside in the colon. So when you eat apples, some of the, uh, let's say, compounds in apples are converted into much more potent compounds through interactions with the intestinal biome, and this seems to contribute to a lessening of heart disease risk factors. One study published in the journal uh, Stroke in 2011 studied over 20,000 adults and found that consuming higher amounts of white flesh fruits and vegetables, including apples, was linked to a lower rate of stroke. The the, uh, the uh, active uh, ingredients in these again were two twofold. First, the antioxidant content of these fruits and vegetables, and second, there was the co fiber content. Fiber, particularly one, one form called soluble fiber. There's two kinds of fiber: uh, soluble and insoluble. Soluble fiber is usually the type found in fruit. Soluble fiber can actually lock on to cholesterol and transport it out of the body. That's the only way your body can get rid of cholesterol. And uh, by doing so, it lowers blood lipids and it reduces the uh, risk of, uh, of uh, heart disease and strokes. And also the antioxidant effect of those nutrients in apples also contributes to a decrease in atherosclerosis, which is formation of plaque in the arteries, also related to cardiovascular disease. And again, uh, most of these uh, benefits of apples are related to the compounds in apples, uh, collectively known as flavonoids, uh, and they've been shown to reduce inflammation and to protect heart and protect heart health. Uh, and a lot of it is related to an improvement in what they call endothelial function. The endothelium is the lining of blood vessels, and uh, a lot of people, uh, over the years, the endothelium gets injured, and when it gets injured, uh, that, that means a reduced ability to produce nitric oxide. A form of nitric oxide is produced in the in the, uh, in the endothelium uh, through enzy enzymatic action when it encounters uh, the amino acid arginine. Uh, less nitric oxide and, and damage to endothelium means stiffer arteries, which means a greater chance of atherosclerosis and heart attacks and strokes. So uh, a lot of the uh, apple polyphenols work by improving endothelial function, and by doing so. It has a, an effect uh, in reducing the risk of heart attacks and strokes. Uh, also, the uh, uh, the other beneficial effects of these uh, compounds in apples include uh, in inhibition of low density lipoprotein oxidation. Uh, low density lipoprotein, also known as LDL, is often called the bad or evil cholesterol because it's associated with the uh, progression of atherosclerosis, heart disease, and strokes. Uh, in fact, LDL is only dangerous when oxidized. 
when it's oxidized, certain changes occur, uh, formation of mast cells. I'm not going to get into the uh, to the uh, cascade that causes atherosclerosis, but let's just say that if you can keep low-density lipoprotein from becoming oxidized, it's harmless and it's actually good for you. Uh, uh, another way that apples help is through reduction of blood vessel permeability, antiplatelet. In other words, uh, the platelets are clotting elements in the blood. If they stick together too much, you can get a blood clot in the uh, arteries. If it happens in a coronary artery, you can get a heart attack. That's a common cause of heart attack. The uh, elements in apples keep the platelets from sticking together or aggregating. Uh, also, apples, again, because of their beneficial effects on the endothelium or lining of blood vessels, they have hypotensive, they lower bl uh, blood pressure, and they have a vasodilator action, again, probably because of increased nitric oxide production in the blood vessels, which maintains the health of the blood vessels. And that's if you could keep your nitric oxide optimal in the blood vessels, you're, go you're going a long way towards preventing future heart disease and strokes. Uh, and again, as I said, another a key element in relation to our cardiovascular disease with apples is the soluble fiber, which helps reduce blood pressure and cholesterol levels, which are, again, both risk factors for stroke. Now, apples also help against the second greatest killer of humans, which is cancer. Uh, I, I, apples contain several different compounds that uh, prevent cancer or tumor formation, including the antioxidants and flavanols uh, found in apples. And I just want to point out at this juncture that most of these, just about all of them, other than the soluble fiber, most of these protective elements in apples are found in the peel, the peel of the apple. So if you uh, eat apples by cutting off the peel and eating just the, uh, uh, the, the fruit part, you're, you're, cut, you're throwing away most of the nutrients, uh, the protective nutrients found in apples. It's kind of comparable to... Uh, throwing away the yolks of eggs and eating only the uh, white. Most of the nutrients in eggs are found in the yolk. So when you're eating the white, you're getting protein and not much more of anything else. So when you eat apples, always eat the whole apple. The peel is very important. Make sure you wash the apples. If they're not organic, they could have some insecticides on them. You want to wash the apple peel thoroughly before you eat it. Now, according to a review of 41 studies, people consuming a higher amount of apples uh, that was associated with a decreased risk of developing lung cancer. So that's something to consider if you're a smoker, but well, you shouldn't be smoking anyway, but you know, if you, if you eat apples, it might help maybe reduce the risk. I don't think it would reduce it by much, much though, because they say, you know, they've got those 3,000 carcinogens and cigarette smoke. Don't depend on apples. Another study observed similar findings reporting that eating apples let, was tied to a lower risk of colorectal cancer which I think is the third uh, biggest ca ca cancer killer, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's after, uh, I think it's after, uh, I think it's lung cancer, breast cancer, and then colorectal cancer. I, I don't know for sure, but it's up there in the top five. And uh, j just eating one apple a day, one apple a day reduces, one study showed it reduces the risk of colon cancer by 50%. One apple. That's tremendous, very impressive. Other research shows suggests that a diet rich in fruits and vegetables should protect against cancer of the stomach, colon, lungs, oral cavity, and esophagus. Uh, a compound in apples called fluoritin can reduce liver tumors. Uh, that's something to keep in mind for all you oral steroid users, uh, because uh, <laughs> I'm not going to get into that, but let's put it this way, long-term oral steroid oral Anabolic steroid use is a risk, risk factor for liver tumors, but that's another story. What are some other benefits of apples? It supports weight loss. Due to their fiber content, apples have been shown to promote feelings of fullness, decrease calorie intake, and increase weight loss. It also improves bone health. Human animal and test tube studies have found that eating a higher amount of fruit, including apples, can be associated with increased bone mineral density and a lower risk of osteoporosis. Apples also are good for your brain. Animal studies suggest that eating animals can help reduce oxidative stress. Oxidative stress in the brain. The brain is mostly uh, polyunsaturated fat. It's highly prone to oxidation. And when it gets and when that when that fat in the brain gets oxidized, that, that's when you have brain problems like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, eating the apples can help this and also prevent mental decline and slow signs of aging. 
apples have also been shown to uh, help uh, prevent uh, asthma, which is interest of interest to me because I have asthma. Studies show that an increased uh, intake of apples may be linked to a ro lower risk of apples. It's probably the antioxidant effect of the apples that does that. Uh, also, apples, uh, one of the more interesting things about apples is they reduce the risk of diabetes, which is now in epidemic proportions throughout, throughout the world. According to a large review, eating one apple per day was tied to a 28% lower risk of developing type 2 uh, diabetes compared to not eating apples. Uh, uh, one, uh, this is a quote from a study that uh, talked about that. Mechanistically, it is feasible that catechins or other polyphenolic comp components and apples may be inversely related to the risk of type 2 diabetes, possibly by preserving pancreatic B cell function via reduced oxidative stress induced tissue damage. It has also been proposed that dehydro, de dehydrocalicones, particularly fluorotin 2 O glucoside, present in relatively high amounts in, in apples, inhibit sodium dependent glucose transporters in the intestinal lumen, there, therefore potentially reducing postprandial glucose response. Uh, let me translate that into English. There's an element in apples called fluoritin, uh, P-H-L-O-R-E-T-I-N, and uh, that actually uh, inhibits the uptake of, uh, of glucose into cells. It's very, very good if you're insulin insensitive where you tend to have hyperglycemia or elevated blood glucose levels. This stuff is very potent. In fact, it, it's, some studies have compared it to, uh, to uh, drugs that are currently being administered to treat uh, diabetes and insulin sensitivity. These drugs are, uh, are, are, uh, are, are based on the glucagon-like glucagon transport of protein. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into a lot of the details here, except to say that the drugs that are, do the same thing as this fluoritin uh, uh, element in apples uh, could have side effects, including uh, a, re a relation to an increased risk of pancreatic cancer, which is the number one cancer killer. Uh, it's uh, almost always fatal. Uh, fi only 5% survive after five years. And this fluoridin stuff does the same thing with no side effects at all. Big difference. So I think that covers uh, this, uh, most of the really good things about apples. Uh, I eat about, I myself, I eat about an apple a day. What I do is uh, when I take my vegetable drink, you know, if you look at my past videos, you know I'm not big on eating vegetables. And, you know, having studied nutrition for almost 60 years, you can't escape the fact that, you know, if you really want to be healthy and prevent disease, you got to eat fruits and vegetables. There's no way around it. You can't get it from supplements. Some of the elements in the fruits and vegetables you can get from supplements. A lot of them you have to just go right for the fruits and vegetables. Good example is that, for example, this compound called sulforaphane, with sulforaphane, which is found in uh, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and uh, uh, Brussels sprouts. Uh, this stuff uh, you can't get in supplement form. You can get a precursor called glucophanin. But it has to be, well, I don't want to go into the whole thing, but it has to be, you have to have a myrosinase enzyme to convert that into active sulforaphane and sulforaphane. If you put sulforaphane in pill form, it's gone. It, it degrades extremely rapidly. But you, you get it every time you cut or chew broccoli. Uh, this uh, myronase is, is produced and it turns glucophanin into sulforaphane. Extremely healthy. Among the things it does as far as health, it actually inhibits myostatin, which is the uh, protein in the muscles that inhibits muscle growth. But I guess, of course, I'm getting off the topic here. But anyway, my, my, my drink, what I was about what I was trying to talk about, I include broccoli in there. I have uh, chard. I have, uh, what else? I have uh, spinach. Uh, I, I lately have added parsley because parsley has an element in it. It's the highest uh, natural uh, source of something called apigenin. Apigenin is related to the increase of a chemical in the body called NAD. <laughs> Let's see how this goes on and on. NAD, in turn, uh, regulates mitochondrial uh, content of cells. It's involved in DNA repair. So apigenin is very, very good for cellular health and kind of slow down the aging process. Apigenin, again, you, it, it's, you can get it in pill form, but it's much better to get it in natural form. So I added the parsley to my drink. And, uh, you know, it tastes like crap, so to kind of 
offset the bitterness I throw in I peel an apple including the peel the whole apple and I put it in with the vegetables and that's my drink and I consume this every day it gives me a good amount of fiber it gives me a lot of protective uh, nutrients that I cannot simply cannot get in supplement form so uh, and by the way there are uh, there is supplement forms of apple polyphenols I do use one of them uh, I admit it I take one capsule a day uh, and the reason I take it is because it's got a pretty high content of that Floridan stuff I told you about. Uh, I'm pre pre diabetic, so anything that's going to help me control my blood glucose, I'm going to take. Uh, so uh, I, I take that. Now that's about it for uh, apples. So uh, if you want to have more uh, information in depth, evidence based information, that includes my 58 years of study and empirical experience, empirical ex you know, experience, being in the trenches in the gym and so forth. Uh, 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 subscribe to my Applied Metabolics newsletter where I cover nutrition, exercise science, uh, hormonal therapy, anti-aging research, fat loss techniques that work, ergogenic aids, women's health and fitness, and many more subjects. And there's other digital uh, publications that cover exercise, some cover nutrition, but nobody covers as wide a range of topics as I do in Applied Metabolics. Furthermore, there's nobody I know of who could match my years of experience as a writer and as, and as a researcher studying this stuff, which is just under 60 years. Uh, most of these guys aren't even close to being 60 years old, much less studying it for 60 years. So uh, experience counts, let me put it that way. Uh, I also include a lot of information in my Applied Metabolics newsletter about training techniques and mistakes to avoid. Uh, by reading my newsletter, you'll avoid some of the mistakes I've had, to, I've made over the years. But I can help you by not making the same mistakes by reading my newsletter. Uh, if you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where each day I post new information on exercise, nutrition, general medical, and health topics. Uh, that's only for Applied Metabolics subscribers. I also have an email portal. Uh, on my Applied Metabolic site where current subscribers only, I don't accept unsolicited questions, can ask me short questions which I'm happy to answer. You're welcome to leave comments or requests for future videos in the comment section under this video. Uh, I, if enough people are interested, I'll try and do a video on it. Uh, uh, please don't bother with the esoteric subjects like urine therapy and that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, not, not not enough interest in that stuff uh, for me to do a whole video on it. Uh, I also don't like uh, doing videos on stuff that I know is clearly false and not scientifically valid. I've gotten a couple of requests from, uh, from let's say, viewers of my videos where they've asked me to do videos on topics which I know are basically, what else can I say, fraudulent. In other words, they're not scientifically valid. And I'm not going to do, a, uh, other people will do that on YouTube, but I'm not going to do that because I try and present both in my newsletter and my videos only the truth, scientifically valid. If something is speculation, I, I tell you it is. So uh, my whole thing is truth and integrity, and that's what I want to stick to. So, you know, if you're going to submit any uh, uh, suggestions for videos, uh, be sure that it's scientifically valid. Uh, and that's about it. If you want to have the... Uh, Again, well, did I give me my website? It's <laughs> www.appliedmetabolics.com. Subscribe today. Each issue, by the way, is 40 to 50 pages. It's more like a monthly ebook. It's extremely in depth. So I always warn people if you're one of those people with 10 second attention spans, well, if you are, you already haven't gotten to the end. You won't be hearing me saying this anyway because you've already turned off the video in less than a minute. So I guess I'm kind of wasting my breath to say this, but. Anyway, in regard to my newsletter, it's very in-depth, but I am a professional writer. I know how to translate complex scientific material. Uh, anyone with a sixth grade education can understand it, so you, you definitely would uh, get benefit. I guarantee it. Every issue, you will learn something from my Applied Metabolics newsletter. I absolutely guarantee it. I don't care what your level of education is. So again, subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. You won't have the best friend you'll ever have. Bruno's hiding again. Couldn't bring him in the video. Go to your local shelter. Adopt a dog. They're great. And they do not, according to a study that just came out, they do not transmit COVID-19. So you're safe. Take care.